Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Prophetic Insights, where we analyze current events as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Not only current events in America, but around the world. And today, I have a friend, a brother, no stranger to our program here, Brother Francis Sieben. And he will be sharing with us some pertinent events, current events, transpiring in the country of France. Brother, welcome. How are you doing today? Thank you very much for your kind welcome, my brother. I would say like uh, Prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, Hitherto has the Lord helped us. And uh, we have our Psalm 91 uh, COVID-free immunity passport, so all is well. Amen, a amen for that one. Psalm 91 is our COVID-19 passport. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, amen. praise the Lord. All right, uh, before we came live, you actually shared a startling current event of what's happening there in France. There is a specific law that President Macron is attempting to put in place there in the country. And this is really going to affect God's people. And we want people to understand, while the mark of the beast begins in America, all around the world, nations are putting in place events so that once America enforces that Sunday law, this movement will spread like a domino effect globally. The Sunday movement is making its way in darkness and we want to enlighten God's people. So I'm going to play this video a few minutes and then have Brother Seben share with us his insights. Our French political affairs editor is here with us uh, now. And Mark, some of the um, notable parts of the bill that I picked up on there, a ban on homeschooling for children except in the cases of severe health problems and any institution that seeks public funds will have to sign a charter uh, pledging to uphold values of secularism. They were a couple of things that stuck out for me. What about, what about you? Yes, I mean, first of all, uh, before getting into the details, because yeah. it's quite a detailed uh, speech in terms of uh, policy content. I mean, he's laying out all the steps. The words are very important uh, because Emmanuel Macron has been dithering essentially on how to name things and how to address them. Today, he says, OK, we're going to do some straight talking and some straight uh, actions as well. So uh, the straight talking, uh, he said, the problem is not secularism in France. Uh, he said, this is our values. This is not the problem. The problem is what he described as Islamist separatism. Hmm. He repeated the word several uh, times. He also uh, talked about radical Islamism, uh, and he added uh, that uh, this was something that needed uh, to be addressed uh, head on. And obviously, it's a very difficult uh, issue, a sensitive issue, because uh, there is, uh, as he said, you know, a willingness to, yes, address the issue head on, but the, on the other side, not stigmatize the Muslim uh, and, community. And he said, we're not trying to ban religion as well. He said that. No, he right said, we're start. not trying to ban religion. We're essentially trying uh, to organize against what he described in much detail as a secretive plot by some uh, radical Islamists to essentially uh, tr uh, attract, especially uh, young people who feel disenfranchised and attract them to what he deems as an ideological core that is contrary to the values of the republic. And he says, we need to bring those children back mm. into uh, the fold. And he said, France has also made some major mistakes. He said, we didn't address uh, the issues, especially of uh, suburban areas where people were essentially put together and we didn't mix, quote unquote, them enough. And he, the place where he's speaking from, Le Miro, is an illustration of that. He said, we failed on this issue. We have to know this. He also talked about the colonial past and uh, not being addressed head on. And he said, this whole mixture of things has led to the current situation. And then he laid out uh, what you described as measures in school, uh, trying essentially... Yeah, let's talk about some of those measures, because he did go into quite a lot yes, of detail about did. how he this did. bill, if it passes yeah. Parliament, But he work. also wanted to address the criticism that he hadn't 
worked on the issue. He said, we worked for three years. Here's what we're going to do. And just one important uh, element, uh, the, this bill is going to be presented mm -hmm. uh, before the cabinet on December 9th. Yeah. Uh, it was supposed to be earlier on. Uh, the last word was November. Now it's December. It's going to be, go before the cabinet and then before parliament. So. Uh, there is no way it's going to be voted before the end of this year. So it could be law by next year, essentially? It could be law, but that's the objective, obviously. And what about some of these concrete measures, then? What, well, what he, he, he said, you know, we have, uh, we have to address uh, the, the issue, and he called it a Republican awakening. Mm. So he said that, you know, there are several uh, pillars. So <laughs> it's clear to me where this is going, but I would like for you to expound upon the crisis there in France regarding education of our children, and what is in this law that President Macron has now chosen to change, and why? Before uh, France, uh, again, good evening, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be uh, witnessing from France uh, to you what's going on here. And before going to the, the crux of the matter, uh, you will notice probably that it's a typical uh, Hegelian dialectic where you have a problem uh, leading to a reaction and calling for a solution. So pay attention to the terminology that is employed because you will uh, have uh, hints of uh, some biblical words or some uh, terms that you will find in the, the writings of Ellen G. White, especially in the Great Controversy. Pay, pay careful attention because this is really uh, rich in, uh, in, uh, uh, semen in the semantics, in the, in the meaning of the, and the choice of uh, terms uh, uh, that is uh, used by the, the, um, the, the rulers of France uh, at present time. So, in a nutshell, what we can see today is, as, well, as you heard in the video, is that President Macron uh, is launching a crackdown on uh, Islamist separatism. So, do you remember what the Bible says? Be ye separate, get out of her. So, mm -hmm. uh, therefore, now the, the crackdown is on Islamist separatism. But, question mark, what is behind separatism in, in Muslim communities? And so, on Friday last week, President Macron pledged to fight uh, Islamist separatism, which he said was threatening to take control in some Muslim communities around France. And uh, this brings to me a first comment uh, in the great controversy. I think um, Pastor Andrew will know exactly the page and the paragraph uh, on his fingertips where it says that the the children of God will be considered enemies of law and order. Oh, yes, brother. So, oh, yes. That's, that's a great five, controversy. Five eight nine of, Page 592. Ah, okay. You, uh, thank you very much for, for this precision. So uh, this separatism is considered as a threat. And I, I'm, I'm asking the question, will separatism from the political religious Babylon considered also as a threat? to the to the uh, law and order and uh, what we see in, in the in the recent his, history i would say in the last 30 years france has struggled with homegrown islamist militancy for years but uh, macron's government is increasingly worried by these broader signs of uh, what they call radicalization mm. often non-violent within Muslim communities, uh, according to, to French officials. For example, they cite the refusal of some Muslim men to shake women's hands uh, or swimming pool that impose alternate time slots for men and women, or even, uh, and it's uh, something that has been identified uh, as early as in the, the late uh, 1980s, Girls are as young as four being told to wear full face uh, veils and a proliferation of uh, uh, religious schools that they call madrasa. Hmm. So uh, let's uh, put it in the, in the context of uh, the, the typology of French society, which is uh, in some respect uh, similar to, to the American society, you know, like kind of melting pot. And I I in France, we have for uh, decades, I would say, uh, since the 1950s, 1960s, uh, a very uh, strong uh, Muslim population, uh, which uh, numbers today around five to, to seven million. 
and representing uh, approximately 8% uh, of the population. So in, uh, in his own terms, President Macron says what we need to fight. So you see, we are here in a, in a fight. It's, it's, uh, it's like a, a war zone. Yes. What we need to fight is Islamist separatism. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, hint, the hint behind this is, and the dragon was uh, wroth with the woman and made war. You know, mm -hmm. we're in a, in a context like of war. We need to fight Islamist separatism mm -hmm. because it's a threat. Macron said during uh, a visit so that he, he paid last, uh, last Friday in a Paris suburb of Les Mureaux. And the problem is an ideology which claims its own laws uh, should be superior to those of the Republic. And for a Bible believer, it reminds us of the, the text uh, in, in the book of Acts, uh, we should obey uh, God rather than man, yes. or uh, we must obey the civil rulers as, as long as they don't uh, infringe upon the rights uh, of our conscience. Yes. And, and as, as you rightfully said in the previous Prophetic Insights today, expounding on the latest uh, uh, papal and cyclical, uh, we live in a, in, in a, in a world uh, environment today where uh, we have to be all brothers and sisters, where there is no, no uh, distinctive that, that must be put forward. So all those who want to, to, to mark a distinction, a separation, will be, uh, uh, as we, we read in the Great Controversy, the object of universal execration, because they, they are separate. They don't want to stick with the flock. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not a sheep. I love sheep, but I'm not a sheep. I'm a man created uh, in, the, in the image of God. Though defective as I am, uh, and imperfect as I am, but uh, I completely assume my my, my manhood in the, um, in uh, in the context of uh, God's creation and God's recreation. And so, uh, President Macron says this uh, assertive Islamist religious practices are separatist because they threaten, again, they use the word threaten, in his view to secede from French institutions and rules, uh, according to what his advisors uh, recently said. So, uh, a bill tackling Islamist separatism will be sent to Parliament early next year. And uh, the, the objective is to uh, uh, enforce it by law by uh, September 2021, when the French uh, pupils and students resume school. So among the measures in the draft law, Macron said that homeschooling will be severely restricted to avoid having children being indoctrinated mm -hmm. in unregistered schools that deviate from the national curriculum. Mm. So you see, in other terms, uh, there is a, uh, a fear that uh, some uh, ideological core will be, uh, that is taught to the children, will be contrary to the values of the Republic. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you replace that in, in, in the political context, uh, uh, we have in the next uh, two years, uh, presidential campaign and uh, Macron today is keen not to leave himself open to attacks from the far right and also the traditional conservative right wing parties on law and order issue such as crime and immigration. And he said, for example, recently that uh, radical Islamism should not be uh, conflated with Islam. So apparently he still make the difference between a moderate Islam and radical Islamism. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is, again, for now, the uh, seductive approach, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, you, you, you push forward the, the good pupils and you, finger, you point your finger on those uh, radical people, mm -hmm. those fundamentalists. And, for example, the fundamentalists in, uh, uh, in the Christian world are those who want simply to live uh, according to what the Bible says, not less and not more. Uh, so uh, you want to f from this uh, from this uh, observation, he wants to build an what he called an enlightened Islam. So hmm. is it now that uh, the the political world should have a, a say on uh, how people have to live their faith? Uh, 
does it mean that our religion is is uh, kind of, of uh, uh, in darkness uh, mm -hmm. that we should uh, have it uh, enlightened by the, the the government or enlightened by the by law so this is a, a a terminology that that seems a little bit weird to me because people are, are should be free to live their their religion of course the state is here to uh, to combat a crime and terrorism, which is absolutely which makes sense. Right. We we do, we absolutely do not make the apology of terrorism or or violence. Absolutely not. But uh, I am uh, a little bit afraid that uh, uh, if the the political world wants to uh, put uh, laws uh, as to how people have to to live their religion. There should be, uh, there, 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 there could be some uh, excesses committed. And of course, there is a crisis of Islam everywhere, which is uh, being corrupted by radical forms. Correct. And some people uh, use uh, uh, Islam to, 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 to commit uh, the, the most horrendous and heinous uh, crimes. But this, is, this should not be uh, conflated with those who want to leave their. Uh, religion according to the rights of their conscience. Mm. So let's go now to the uh, more specific topic of uh, what uh, what is planned uh, as a change in the uh, educative world. Correct. The school the, code. Yes, uh, the, the the current state of, of the law is that uh, it's uh, over uh, over a century ago, uh, the Jules Ferry Law of March 28, 1882. Uh, states stipulates that education is compulsory, not school. Hmm. Education is compulsory until today, uh, 2020. Education is compulsory. This obligation applied. Uh, this uh, obligation applies from the age of three for all French or foreign children residing in France. So again, it's uh, education which is compulsory. And originally. School, school was compulsory until the age of 13, then 14, and uh, from uh, the law of uh, January 6, 1959, it has been extended until the age of 16. So now the family has two possibilities. Mm -hmm. They can go to a public or a private school, including a religious school, or they can ensure the education of the children itself with prior declaration right so let's see in more detail what the the current law says it's article l131 uh, paragraph one of the code of education which again says education is compulsory for every child from the age of three up to the age of 16. Mm -hmm. uh, paragraph two compulsory education can be given either in public or private establishments okay. or schools or in families by the parents hmm. or one of them or any person of their choice. Hmm. So this is the law that, that, that is uh, enforced right now at the moment where I speak with you. Correct. Paragraph five, modified by law number 2019-791 of July 26, 2019 says, the person responsible for a child subject to compulsory education, as defined in paragraph one of L131, must have it enrolled in a public or private educational establishment, or else declare to the mayor and to the authority of the state competent in matters of education, that they will make him give instruction in the family. Mm -hmm. In this case, an annual declaration is required. Correct. So uh, the children compulsory, the, the, the children, uh, paragraph 10, the children subject to compulsory education who receive instruction in their families, including as part of enrollment in a distance education establishment, are from the first year and every two years the subject of an investigation by the competent town hall solely for the purpose of establishing the reasons given by the persons responsible for the child and whether they are given an instruction to the extent compatible with their state of health 
and the conditions of family life. The result of this investigation is communicated to the competent state authority in matters of education and to the persons responsible for the child. I have educated uh, with their mother, uh, my, my three children uh, at home, and uh, indeed we had uh, an inspection uh, establishing if we were in compliance with the state of health and the condition of family life, and also following the, the national uh, curriculum and following the, 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 the core of knowledge that uh, they can expect from a, your, uh, a child at uh, every age. So when the investigation has not been carried out, it is carried out by the representative of the state in the department. Uh, the competent state authority in matters of education must at least once a year from the third month following the declaration of instruction by the persons responsible for the child provided in the first paragraph of Article 131, Paragraph 5, uh, have it verified on the one hand that the instruction given at the same home is provided for the children of a single family and on the other hand, that the education provided complies with child in education as defined in 13111. To this end, this control makes it possible to ensure the progressive acquisition by the child of each of the areas of the common base of knowledge, skills and culture defined in 12211 with regard to knowledge and skills objectives expected at the end of each cycle of compulsory education. It is adapted, of course, to the age of the child and when he has a disability or disabling health disorder to his particular needs. Last but not least, the control is prescribed by the competent state authority in matters of education according to the modalities it determines. In principle, it is organized at the home where the child is educated. The persons responsible for the child are informed following the annual declaration that they are required to make in application of the first paragraph of Article 131-5 uh, of the purpose and methods of the controls, which will be conducted in accordance with this article. So, sorry, it's a little bit technical, right. but I think it's important to, to tell the people exactly what is the present state of the law and how it is going to evolve. So uh, I don't have yet the, um, we don't have yet the draft of, of the bill, but very clearly and simply, uh, Emmanuel Macron announced on uh, uh, October the, the 2nd, so last Friday, that homeschooling will be from the start of the 2021 school year, strictly, strictly limited in particular to health requirements. So it means, for example, in case of severe handicap or a health issue that, that completely prevents the, the child to go to school. And that it will therefore become compulsory within the school from the age of three years old. So it's, 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 it's a very young age, hmm. very, very young age. So uh, I would like to, to conclude this uh, short presentation. There, there, there could be a lot, of course, that we could say on the matter. Right. But uh, I try to apply the, the American method of presentation, keep it simple and short, uh, by uh, giving a few, few comments, uh, which I draw from the, the pen of inspiration and especially the book Child Guidance. There are lots of quotes. I just picked up uh, two of them that seem to me the most relevant. Uh, Child Guidance, page 26, uh, paragraph 4. Children should virtually be trained in a home school from the cradle to maturity. So, Brother Andrew, what is maturity age, hmm. in your opinion? <laughs> maturity age? Yes. What would you say? We're talking what? Average Seven, around 18? 12, 18, yeah. Uh, 12, 15, yeah, somewhere in there. You know, it reminds me, uh, uh, and this is where, you know, the God's people uh, are meant to be at the head and not uh, at the tail. Correct. Uh, probably 20 years ago, there was the son of a, of a pastor who was home educated, and he got his, uh, 
his uh, high school diploma at the age of 14, whereas normally uh, every student gets it at the age of 17 or 18. Correct. And he was homeschooled his whole curriculum. And so, that's why I uh, said don't, don't tell me that don't tell me that being homeschooled uh, deprives you of uh, uh, maturity, of evolution, of knowledge, of understanding. Quite the contrary. Correct. Uh, I continue the quote. And as in the case of any well-regulated school, the teachers themselves gain important knowledge. The mother, especially, who is the principal teacher in the home, should they learn should they learn the most valuable lessons of our life. And it makes me think, of course, of Mary and Jesus. Jesus was homeschooled. Jesus did not go to any uh, public school or private school. He was homeschooled. Am I correct? Correct. Second quote, uh, education begins at home. So page 17 of Child Guidance, paragraph one. It is in the home that the education of the child is to begin. Here is his first school. Here, with his parents as instructors, he is to learn the lessons that are to guide him throughout life. Lessons of respect, obedience, reverence, self-control. The home are a decided power for good or for evil. There are in they are in many respects silent and gradual, but if exerted on the right side, they become a far-reaching path. If the child is not instructed right here, Satan will educate him through agencies of his choosing. How important then is the school in the home? I think this these two quotes uh, much comment they, they they speak volume yes but you know brother andrew while i was preparing this maybe uh i'm gonna uh, conclude by something that's uh, maybe uh, surprising to you but um, let's let's replace it in the in the context of the of our subject tonight it's uh, the text uh, in revelation 12 verse 3 to 6 and of course we know uh when we have a little bit of prophetic uh, that uh, the, the dragon here represents uh, uh, Satan and the civil rulers and uh, the child represents uh, Jesus but let's put it in uh, let's put it if you allow me to make a uh, to put it uh, to make it a little bit literal sure. and le le let's read it in the context of our subject tonight I read uh, Revelation 12 if people want to take their Bible Revelation 12, verse 3 to verse 6. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And Pastor Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, but you told us many times that the dragon can mean also civil rulers, right? Yes. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, huh? And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Brought from all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So, of course, as I said, it, 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 it applies to Jesus. But let's put it just for uh, the sake of the illustration let's put it a literal don't you think today that uh, and and not just today but since uh, i would say the era of socialism what we have seen in countries like russia like romania like many socialist and communist countries like those civil rulers those dragons uh they are waiting for the the mothers to deliver the child and to confiscate the child so the child does not belong to the parents it belongs right. to the state that's true so it's a little bit of, pardon me, a literal interpretation just for the sake of illustration. And uh, it just crossed my mind while I was preparing that, that uh, uh, yes, the, the dragon is also literally after our children. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, this is maybe another reason why it's going to be very uh, difficult for parents to 
to exert the, their rights to, to educate their children because the, the state now wants to take control. Sure. Uh, the, the, the state is not foolish. They know that uh, influence starts from a very young age. And so there, there's, a, there's a, the battle for the minds starts at the, uh, at the maternity, mm -hmm. starts uh, in, at the cradle, yes. the cradle. Right. You start there at the cradle. So there is, there's a lot which we could comment, but right. think uh, what we are called to live in, in, the coming, in the coming few months and few years and how uh, humanity uh, and especially the, 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 the Bible believers, the, the present truth believers will have to make a choice between obeying the, the draconian laws of the state or uh, uh, as, as it says in Revelation 12, uh, the Lord will, hallow, will, will provide also for us uh, a place in the wilderness. Correct. And I believe the Lord will, will protect the families there um, because otherwise it will be a, a terrible dilemma for, for children who are looking for security, for, for uh, um, peace of mind, for education, knowledge, uh, if, they, if they are torn apart between the, the state and their parents. That's true. Amen. Yeah, there's so much more to say, but sure. uh, I had promised you 15 minutes. So, <laughs> Amen. Amen. But let's, let's have a word of prayer at this time. Father in heaven, we're thankful for what you have bestowed upon us. To whom much is given, much is required. I pray you'll encourage the parents who are trying to live a thus say the Lord, to train up their children in the way that they should go, that when they're old, they will not depart. In the time of the crisis, they will not depart. Please keep us faithful, we pray. And I pray for your people in that country of France, in other countries, the same crisis, we're told, that begins in America, will come to your people globally. I pray a special blessing upon Brother Seben and his family. Keep us faithful, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our brother, and thank uh, you again. A, a blessing to you all from France, dear friends. And don't forget to take your uh, dose of vitamin PA every day. Vitamin PA stands for Vitamin Prophesy Again. <laughs> Amen. All right. God bless. Take care. God bless.